Robert from BenQ joins us to talk about monitor and projection calibration. So you get some bonus content this week. Hmm, cats and calibration. Well, it's an early Thursday. We have Yay. some, eh, we have bonus content this week. Bonus, <laughs> it's content. bonus content. So. You guys have been so good and the courses have been so good over the last few weeks that you get bonus B2B. <laughs> yeah. And this is going to be like a, a little bit of a geek out for us designers, right? Yeah. Um, and we had a few weeks ago, we had, uh, first of all, welcome Robert Ben Q. We're going to call you Ben Q. Robert. Thank Wait, you, Robert. Where's my camera? At? There's my camera. Okay, yes. there it is. Everyone sees there you go. now. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> that, that's what's going to be. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, everyone sees you on cam right now, and I'm going to man manipulate this as the show goes on. But um, so we had a, a, a call, not a call, like a raffle thing a few weeks ago where we had you on, yeah. and I think it was decided that we needed you have you back to talk about some of the geeky stuff to help with the designers and, and name me like calibration stuff and colors. Um, yep. So we want. Thank you for coming back on the show. Really appreciate yep. it. Now, before we get into the geeky Happy stuff. To be here. Well, thank you. Thank before you. we get into that, though, we have a tradition here at yep. B2B, right? Where is what's behind the bar with Mashi and Masta, because we always like to have a drink when we discuss golf course design. But tonight it's a special one because it's Ann Robert. Robert. And Robert. Yeah, Robert. Thanks, Robert. Yes. And yes. Robert. And yes. Robert. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and I'll kick it off because I'm I'm playing Jane tonight. So I, um, well, we'll get into that in the storytelling time. But I'm just drinking a, a beer. So I have Lawson's Finest uh, uh, Hazy Rays IPA. So this is a, a keg that I picked up earlier in the week. Um, something I had had six packs before, and it's just a very citrusy IPA. And um, yeah, but like you're not just race. drinking you're not just drinking a beer like a, a beer when you when you when you were like oh i'm just slumming it and i'm just drinking a beer i thought you were going to say something like yeah i'm i'm drinking well, Miller Lite. i noticed a second one <laughs> well well, well i'll tell you and I got story some, time I got some P yeah yeah, yeah. Well, pbr going <laughs> well i've i'm you know yes i do have two here because you guys know mash you know how these shows go they we go for 90 minutes and i need more yep. than one beer right yep yep yes. i hear you yeah yep um but so let's see, Robert. Let's call you out next. What you got? What are you drinking? Um, I have a bottled in bond whiskey. Yeah. I'm a straight bourbon. Um, uh, it's from a local distillery here in the DFW area. Um, what's, uh, what's called? called Unbent. B e n d t. I've not, I've not um, heard of them. Okay. Well, that's because they are super local. Um, you can pretty much only get it at the distillery and a few liquor stores around here. Um, but got it from my dad for Father's Day, really liked it. And this served as a good excuse to go by there and um, uh, pick up another bottle um, uh, for myself. So but this isn't this isn't the bottle you gave your dad that you really no, bought yourself. No. So you're not <laughs> no, no, no. Well, we're a little different. I don't need an excuse to drink. <laughs> yeah, I won't. Exactly. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe this show is what I consider my excuse. <laughs> <laughs> or life in general. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> uh, mm. so right you are, Obi Wan. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Mashy? What do you do? What do you. You know, I and you'll you will we'll cover it in story time in a few minutes here, but like I had the absolute day from hell yesterday. Um, and it's kind of carried over into today, uh, to, to a little bit. So I 
didn't get out to get something new. So with 4th of July right around the corner, I'm sticking with that ammunition distillery right, um, good call. that I had last week. And I'm just going to keep drinking it through the holiday weekend since it's, uh, it's the, you know, the 4th of July is right around. Oh, and by the way, um, as we record this, you didn't know this. Tomorrow is my birthday. So I will be oh. what? drinking Happy this birthday. through my birthday. What? Mm-hmm. Happy birthday! There are not there is not a cake big enough to put that many candles in it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to come. Uh, Steve's gonna have to come up with some uh, ammunition. Oh yeah, Steve's yeah. Like, I agree. I agree. Yeah. It's a little like yeah, I agree. Gunshots. Some, uh, yeah, gunshots and stuff. Yeah, I agree. Yep. I agree. So it's actually really good. I I will tell you, I do like the uh, aged in um, uh, cab barrels, Cabernet barrel. Uh, yeah, it's aged in Cabernet barrels, and you can you can taste it and, and smell it a little bit in the bourbon. And it's not like goofy. It's actually really, I actually really enjoy it. All right. Oh, I was gonna also say, since we're talking liquor, to um to uh, the magician, um <laughs> who turned me on to I think it was the, yeah it was the magician turned me on to Boone's County where we reviewed that one in a few yes shows he sent ago. he sent you a bottle right he, he did he a... sent me a bottle okay. we reviewed it. Um, I mentioned it to my little local, um, liquor store where I buy my bourbon from. Uh-huh. And I went into the liquor store a couple of days ago no, and they sure had enough it. on the counter that he's got bottles of it now and he's carrying it. And, nice. um, so yeah, so we're helping expand, uh, Boone's County, uh, uh, bourbon out here to Colorado. <laughs> Fantastical. Fantastical. Yeah, they were just making people's lives better all around. Yeah. <laughs> So made they, by ghosts from bourbon country interesting yeah. <laughs> that bottle looks familiar though that looks awfully familiar which one be, that yeah the boone yeah the, the boone, boone county, the boone county. Yeah, yeah yeah it's out of kentucky if i see that i'll have to grab a bottle that's a good one yeah that's a really good one. it is really good i actually it's really good so we're going to um we do maybe have a couple i i guess they're not golf stories this week though right um golf related well, I don't actually I don't think either of my stories are really golf related. I mean, first of all, I came here tonight not from golf. I came here from bocce. So I, I play in a bocce league at the Italian. I don't think Lodge. I could spell bocce. <laughs> so let alone, let alone understand what it is. So maybe after a few more it, of my it's, bourbons. It I is it. I for you to know, bocce is like the simplest game in the world. You throw a ball and then you everyone tries to get their balls the closest to that closest ball. To That's it, yeah. the, the gist of it. But it's um it's a it's it's a bar stool sport. You know, you drink yeah. our our rule on our team is you have to have a beer in your hand. If you if you throw a ball without a beer in your hand, that's like a huge party foul. Bot- but, Bocce started by throwing rocks. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean <laughs> it's it's and essentially rocks. we're still throwing rocks, right? Yeah. It was like couldn't get it closer to my rock. <laughs> but you mentioned earlier it was like, oh, you know, Masta doesn't drink Miller Lights. Well, at Bocce, I drink Miller Lights. <laughs> You drink that's, Miller we Light. get okay. we get buckets of Miller Lights and we bring them out and it's it's under roof. It's a pretty nice court and everything. Um, I'm not knocking a Miller Light. I'm a big fan of a Miller Light. A, PBR. I'm a big a fan cold of a, Miller, a Mick Ultra. Cold Miller Light on a, a summer night of bocce is actually a very refreshing drink. I agree. You know, I agree. You just normally always come to the show with um, even your slumming it beers are much nicer <laughs> <Yeah>. than <laughs> yes, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, but so yeah, I ha- I've had several Miller Lights before hitting my my IPA tonight and. Uh, we are like 14 and two right now at Bocce. Ooh. We're, we're, we're killing it. And I was throwing missiles tonight. I mean, no one That's would stop good. me. So if, well, if then, only my, gosh, my golf good. game could get as good as my Bocce game, I'd be much happier. You've got some 14s <laughs> in your golf game. It's okay. It's pretty yeah. much the same. <laughs> <laughs> what I should ask you guys is if I, I shot a 65 tonight, was that nine holes or 18? Well, yeah, right, yeah. Then, then you made the turn, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Then I made the turn. <laughs> now, Mash, I know you had a rough, you had a rough day yesterday, right? So I, yeah. So my story is a little golf related. Um, I needed to. So my daughter, who is, uh, it doesn't matter how old she is, my daughter, who is a teenager, uh, spent last week out in Northern California at golf camp. Yep. Um, and it's a great camp. She gets to spend time with. They bring in. Uh, uh, college coaches from all over the country that they are instructors and then they've got college players 
both from this university as well as from other parts, other universities that they are counselors and it's just great. And then the way they, they do this is they have uh, the first half of the day, they do stations. There's 14 different stations. It's been 45 minutes at a station. Like one station is flop shots. One is chip shots. One is full swing, whatever. And then this, so they do that for the morning, they have lunch and they go out onto the, 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 the university course and they play 18, um, they do that every day for five days. And so it's great instruction, it's great. So my goal yesterday was to fly from Denver to Northern California, get a car, drive to where she was, pick her up, drive back to the airport and catch our seven o'clock flight and be back home by 10 o'clock at night. Um, so I go to the Denver airport. Here's a little I, hint, that did not happen. <laughs> it did not happen. So uh, I uh, I got to uh, the airport. My flight was supposed to leave at 11 in the morning. And at three in the afternoon, we were sitting on the plane in Denver waiting to take off still. Oh, okay. Delay after delay after delay. So now at this point, it's a little freaky because I have a, a minor daughter. Yeah. So meanwhile, I'm on the I'm on the plane texting with her and other folks that we know at the camp. Can you drive my daughter from this from this camp to the airport? Because I no longer have the time to rent a car, yeah. drive to her and get back and make that flight. So we make the arrangements and she gets uh, a ride to, and she's gonna meet me at the airport. They're just gonna drop her off at the terminal. Which, huge airport, kind of weird to start with. Yeah. Um, you're gonna drop a, you know, a young, young um, How old uh, is minor. she? She's 16. Okay. So you're gonna drop a, I mean, she's not, I mean, she could fly by herself, but. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not. She didn't. Anyway, so um, we um, I take off and I'm in route and I land and within 30 seconds of landing, I get noticed that my return flight has been canceled. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm now in San Francisco. I'm an SFO, huge airport. I'm I'm taxiing. You are in air plane. travel purgatory at the moment. Oh yeah. And 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 the app tries to rebook me. The earliest rebook home was Saturday morning. Oh. So this was Wednesday <laughs> evening. <laughs> and the earliest they can rebook me is Saturday morning. And so I start scanning other uh, uni- uh, 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 airline uh, websites and I find Southwest Airlines has two one-way tickets. I mean, they have more than two, but they have a one-way flight that had availability for two tickets out of SFO back to Denver at 10.30 that same night. And so we just book them. Yeah. And I spend hours with the airline trying to get my tickets canceled and refunded and blah, 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 get all that done, meet my daughter. We have to wait five hours at the airport for the flight. That flight gets delayed. And doesn't leave San Francisco until about 11, a little after 11, maybe 11, 10, 11, 15 at night, San Francisco time. Yeah. So the, the the good news is, well, we got in, we got our bags, got everything. I walked into the house at a, almost four in the morning this morning. And at six, my son came in. Good morning, daddy. I missed you. How are you doing? <laughs> so I'm here drinking bourbon on two hours sleep. So cheers. All right. <laughs> Holy cow. Yep. So that's going to go right spent, to the head. I think I spent 17 hours in airports. Uh, so that was my uh, golf adventure yeah. of yesterday. Yeah. Not yeah. quite. Not quite an Not adventure, quite. but it's a story. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't describe it as an adventure. The funny thing was, is there's a bar in the, in the Southwest terminal of SFO called the bourbon house. I saw it and I'm like, it's a restaurant and bar. Like, we're going to camp right here. They don't have bourbon. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? I, mean, I, I shouldn't uh, say what? that. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. They did have bourbon. They had like bullet and buffalo trace. There, I was oh, expecting okay. like, a, like, like a menu with some bourbons. It was called the bourbon house. And I was expecting a menu with bourbons. No. It's nothing. like they going into a side place that says it's a steakhouse. And they've got hamburgers and um, yes. maybe um, a flank. <laughs> yeah. It, it's salmon that they bought at the grocery store. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that was my story. So Robert, how's your week going? Huh? Are you are you gonna you gonna take some time off for the holidays? Um yes. 
Um, does taking off Monday count as oh, yes. taking time off yeah, for yeah, the yeah. holidays? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. well then yes. Well then yes, I am. Okay. Um, uh, but I mean, other than that, honestly, today felt like a Friday. Yes. Let's ahead. talk about Before... calibration. I don't want Robert to lose his job. <laughs> yeah, you and me both. Um, I prefer not to lose my job over this, Yo, too. B, B to B, we, bear, we can't even afford enough to buy a bottle of bourbon on this show, so we can't hire you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay, so, so yeah, so display calibration. Um, yeah, so, like, we really, we, after we talked, at, like, on the, the, the BenQ Excel, the raffle that we did, we started talking about calibration. And ultimately, I think what we want to talk about is, like, what is it and, like, why is it important, especially for, like, guys like us to do, like, a lot of display, like, like or we're designing courses. And, and let's face it, the colors of our courses are everything, right? Mash and I review courses. We look at the colors. So, like, what is calibration and why should we be concerned about it? Well, essentially, I mean... Calibration is making sure that what you see on your monitors is actually accurate. Um, uh, so, in essence, the colors have a numerical value um, uh, at, at, at the base of it. Yep. Um, and so, you want to make sure that that numerical value that looks like what you think it does shows up across other displays how you think it does. Similar, um, right? So, like, yeah, yeah, what yeah. I, what the I number, see the number here. The same. So, I've got two displays here. I got my laptop, and then I have the one that I'm looking at, which is an integrated display with a camera. And I definitely notice differences between the two. So, you're telling me that we, I can calibrate these displays so they look exactly the same? I can do that. Not exactly. Okay. Not exactly. Um, uh, th th there's, there's pretty much always going to be differences, and it's going to depend on. The quality of the display, um, uh, different monitors or projectors um, uh, are going to cover a different percentage of what is called a color gamut. And there's a lot of color gamuts out there. Um, the most common one, the one that we're probably, well, whoever is watching this is probably looking at right now is going to be sRGB. Yep. Um, it was a basically a a a common color space that was um uh, come up with back in i think 1996 between microsoft and someone else um and it basically serves as the color gamut of most of the internet in essence um when you say that, that that's a gamut it, it's really when you say that's it's it's how you identify the numerical color right that's what a gamut does uh y yeah well well yes um uh and that gamut fits within what is called the um uh CIE 1931 um uh chromacity diagram which is basically I know that was a whole bunch of weird stuff that I just said um but it's essentially were you here for the conversation be... we just had 5 minutes ago about cats just check okay yeah that's true I was just here for that <laughs> I think he was abused by that. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I'm, uh, I don't know if you can bring bring up um, uh, what I'm showing at all. Um, uh, but if you want to take a look at it, it's it's basically this weird oblong triangle thingamajig. Um, uh, stream up. Can we can we project his stream onto our stream? You should be able, if it's are you sharing your like are you uh you should be able to stream in Discord. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's that, that's I'm 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 sharing it at, at the moment. I don't know if you can bring it up or not. Let me see if I can. Uh, yeah, watch history. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So this is what's called the CIE 1931 um uh, chromatic diagram. It's basically all the colors in the visible spectrum that the human eye can actually see. Okay. Um, and then you have your color gamuts that fit within it. Um, sRGB is this white one, which probably is not going to show up at all on the stream, at least up in this corner. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can but you can see, see it, it yeah. kind of on the outside here. Yeah. And then yeah. you have your other color gamuts here. You, you've got DCI-P3 is the green one. You've got Adobe RGB. That, was that came out in 1998. 
Um, uh, that was mainly for print work, but it's kind of a standard to this day. And then you've got Rec 2020, which is the big boy um, uh, that covers much more of it. Um, and that one's what you'll see in like digital cinemas, um, uh, stuff like that. Um, and it's kind of the the more modern color space um, uh, for for today for like actual movies. Okay. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea, you know, like this, this whole thing is the entire visible spectrum. Um, and then color spaces will fit inside of that typically represented it as a triangle, um, uh, 99% of the time. And so what color calibration tries to do is to make sure that whatever colors, whatever color gamut you're in, whichever one you're working with, right. um, uh, that it matches up correctly to where whatever your display is actually emitting color wise is going to actually match up with what that numerical value is. Okay. So that way it'll actually display properly whenever you take that and have it show on something else. Okay. Now then if that other thing is not calibrated or is wonky or what, what have you out of your hands, um, uh, honestly, yeah, but, but um, as but, a designer, we really want to baseline something, right? Yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. It, it, and that's essentially you want like a, a, a common space to work with. Um, uh, it's, it's like an ISO standard. Yeah, because um, uh, I would envision essence. that if, if, if I'm as a designer, if what I'm looking at isn't really accurate, then it's just going to make it that much worse when it goes to something else that isn't accurate. So at least if I can baseline what I'm working on, so that I know what I'm seeing is accurate, then at least if it goes to another system, <laughs> it's not as bad, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, and that's um uh, that that's like with like a like a lot of our projectors, like the one that we just released, the LH820 SP. Um, uh, it's got what's called a delta E, which is basically a variance from what that calibration is. It's got a delta E of less than two, which basically means that it's pretty much spot on. Um, uh, with that color gamut, um, and that's just factory calibrated out of the box. Yeah. Um, okay. and, and and so the whole idea is that trying to take it from what you see on your monitor and then getting it to what you see on the screen, and having those two things represent each other as best as possible. Um, there's pretty much always going to be some variance. Um, uh, no matter what, I mean, because you're, you know, you're looking at an LCD screen which is emitting light, right? Versus the projector which is reflecting light. Yeah. Right. Um, yes. uh, there's going to be some natural differences there. Um, but yeah, that that's that's the whole idea behind calibration. Um, like if you look at, for example, how you actually calibrate it is you're going to use something like this, this thing here, the um, uh, the, the the calibrate, and so it's essentially a sensor that you're going to just actually sit there and rest on your monitor. Do you buy that sensor? Do you rent it? How does that? How does that work? Ah, uh, you buy it. Okay. Um, I haven't heard of any rental programs. Um, okay. how much are these things typically cost? Are they tens, fifties, hundreds of dollars, thousands, ten thousand, two million? <laughs> Depending on what you want to spend anywhere in between there, um, uh, and what the application is, um, but for like for 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 monitor monitor and projector stuff, if you're not looking at like you know like ind industrial manufacturing or being, you know, a paint company or something like that, yeah. um, uh, probably between 100 and 200 bucks oh, okay. um, for okay. one of these. Okay, right. that's, that's reasonable. Not 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 anything unreasonable. Yeah, exactly. Now, um, did, now, did these? So that that's the sensor. Now, I assume there's some type of software that's associated with this too, right? Yes. Um. That's that's like Calibrite has their own software. Um. If you use our monitors, which I think you can see in the picture, that actually is one of our monitors. Um. Uh, we actually work with them to develop to co-develop software. Um. Uh, for monitor calibration. Um. There's other um, uh, co color calibrators out there as well. Um, uh, they have their own software. Um, you can use them with literally any monitor. Um, your mileage may vary as to how much you really get out of it. Because I mean, like if you're using like your bog standard, just 
desktop computer monitor that only yeah. covers just a little bit of a color space. Yeah. There's, you know, only so much you can do. Right. Um, right. So the more, the, the, the larger color gamut that your monitor can cover, the more accurate um, uh, it'll end up being, um, uh, especially after calibration. Right. Um, yeah. But basically it's, it's this little doodad that you stick on here. I've heard some people say, make sure you calibrate in a dark room. Um, but at least from what I read more and more and more and more is calibrated actually as if you're in your actual just working space. So just normal right, lighting, the ambient you're, you're light, any normal job. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Now, exactly. It's going to have an impact on it. Now I assume yeah. that that profile that you're looking, we're looking at right here, that's, that's different than what you would need to calibrate a projector, though, right? You would think so. And I initially thought so. Um, uh, because I've personally never calibrated a projector before. I've calibrated a monitor, but I've never calibrated a projector before. Okay. Um, but actually looking into it and talking to some folks, is you actually use that exact same thing, and you literally just put it on a tripod and aim it at your screen. No way. Real, okay. real, real close <laughs> to the screen? Like, I'm assuming you want it right up against the screen, or I guess not no, because like, you're projecting. Like, not, you need not in the be, shadow, like, obviously. Not in the shadow, <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. No, and not right next to it either. Um, yeah. uh, like, like, basically six, eight feet away. Okay. Um. I was almost surprised to learn that. Yeah, um, I am too. Because, yeah, um, I mean, that's that's not the most accurate way to do it, um, uh, but it's by far the most cost-effective because other than that, you're going to be buying a spectrometer, which is right. way up there in cost. Um, well, so I, I thought, which is interesting, I when we were touching this topic in that raffle the, that we did a few weeks ago, um, my initial impression was you are calibrating the monitor and or the projector to each other. Yes. You're really not. You are, you're project. You're calibrating to the standard on yeah. each of the two and trying to get those two as close to the standard. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. And that's basically what it'll do whenever you calibrate it. It's what's going to be called an ICC profile. Um, uh, and essentially it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's a three dimensional, um, uh, mapping of colors. Okay. Um, uh, that'll then be applied to whatever the display is. So whether it's a monitor and then you'll have a, another one for your projector. Um, and then essentially, yeah, you're, you're exactly right. Is that it's getting it as close to that standard as possible. Three dimensional you... mapping of colors. I'm just. I, I'm going to have to drink. It's this. cool. That's... Do you? <laughs> yeah. Do you X, um... X Y Z access. Uh, um, uh, of color access. though. Of color. My goodness. Yeah. But do you? Do you find Red, green, Robert, blue. You know. Do you find that? Um, because of the nature of projectors, that projectors are further off from calibration than monitors, or are they both historically off a lot? Or do monitors lose calibration over time? Like if I have a brand yes. new 4K beautiful monitor and it, it, it should be in, it should be better calibrated out of the box than a four year old monitor. You know, is it, what are your thoughts yes. on all that? Yes. Um. Uh, yeah. Exactly. I'm. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um. Uh, it will drift over time. Yeah, um, uh, especially with like a lamp-based projector, um, and also your, L, you know, your your LCD monitors, um, uh, that'll also drift over time. So, like, if you're a photographer, um, uh, for example, you're going to calibrate your monitor, at least depending on what level you're at. You know, like if you're a hobbyist, probably once a month. If you're a professional, probably at least once a week. Wow. Um, uh, but because of how like the LED backlights work and stuff like that is that you'll end up with slight drift over time. And so if you're, you know, working with, with especially color sensitive, sense, sensitive stuff, you're going to want to want to calibrate really frequently, maybe daily. I'm, uh, I'm honestly not sure. Yeah. Um, but the same thing also applies to projectors um, uh, as well. Um, especially lamp based projectors, because as those lamps, you know, kind of go through um, uh, and, and 
they essentially, you know, they'll burn out over time um, a lot faster than like something like a laser or an LED projector will. Um, and so you'll see more color drift. Um, there's also, I'm not going to name any names, but there's other technologies other than DLP, which where whenever they get kind of warm um, uh, yeah. and hot from the heat of whatever the light source is, is it'll cause possible color degradation. Um, I, ass- so I, assume also, keep in mind. I assume also in a lamp projector, the as the bulb wears out, that will change it. But then also, if you replace the bulb with a non-genuine bulb, that will have an impact as well. Yeah, your mileage may vary um, uh, as far as genuine versus non-genuine bulbs. Um, I've definitely seen a lot of people put non-genuine bulbs in a projector, and then it'll last 300 hours and explode. And then yeah. you've got mercury, mercury um, uh, to deal with, um, which I think you're supposed to like let the room air out for like six hours or something. Mm-hmm. Last time I checked, um, uh, mercury vapor, no fun. Yeah, it's not that bad. <laughs> supposedly, you're not supposedly you're not supposed to inhale mercury. Um, uh, you ever put uh, it in your hand? You can flip it back and forth. It's that little bubbly <laughs> silver. Oh, yeah. mom, my mom used to use an old mercury thermometer when I was a kid. You can, you know? you can crack those things thing. open and you know put it on your tongue. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, super fun. Just like lead. It's great. Just like lead. I mean, yeah, yeah mercury, lead. All the heavy metals are great. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but j- just just. J- just to kind of circle back with um uh, what we were talking about earlier with with how far away to put it. I mean, this is oh, okay. So he's, that, he's wow. celebrating that. Yeah, so that's. I mean, it's not like you have to be like super close or anything. So, Mashi, we have to make a decision here. Yes. Whether we we change our bourbon fun tracker to find a calibration. <laughs> no, no. First off, the decision is easy on that one. No, I know. I know. <laughs> bourbon, bourbon wins always. So, um, I was actually thinking maybe we should get some of the design guys. Maybe we want to go in and just buy one, and yeah, then we and just ship it, it around, around send yeah. it around, have people use it to calibrate their stuff, and yeah. you know, one of us can hold it and then just ship it or you know, whatever, something like that. Yeah, it might be fun. And Matt, there, yeah, I there, lost your video, just so you know. There, um, uh, there, there, there is um, uh, open source software out there for calibration. Um, uh, you can find it on GitHub. Okay. Um, I forget what it's called. It's four letters. I just know that. But yeah, if if you just Google it, you can find Jeez, it. But there's open source calibration now. software out there. <laughs> Ah, G- man. Oh, G- no. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. That- no, jeez. <laughs> Is that was five letters? So many four letters for because you. these things frustrate you so much, you just start saying four letter words. <laughs> you just say four letter words. And... Jesus, this is a piece of. No, no. <laughs> so, so, how often do you recommend calibrating your monitor? You might have covered that. And I'm drinking. I don't know. But how often do you recommend? Is it once a year? Once every, you know? I think he's. I mean, what was it? Like it, once it, a week it, for professionals? Once a week? Like if you're like a professional photographer, mm-hmm. maybe once a week, maybe more often, depending if you're like doing color work and then doing printing for magazines, then yeah, more often. But I mean, for golf course design, maybe once a month. So uh, about one, as often as mass once every three months. Line. <laughs> about once a week. <laughs> <laughs> I could calibrate once every course. What's well, a course? <laughs> and that's like that's like two times a year. <laughs> if that. But uh but yeah, that that that's I mean, you don't have to do it a ton. Um uh it, it's it's not like anything overbearing and I I I think for a lot of like your course designers, at least like starting out just doing that base level initial yep. calibration. Well, I know um, that I have I have my laptop, which is an LCD screen, and then I've got this other big 4K screen in, that I'm looking at right now. And, and if I'm here at my desk, I design, of course, on the big screen. And I, yeah. it is definitely different than my laptop screen. I mean, my naked yeah. eye knows that when I drag that across, I'm going to get different. So to be able to calibrate so that my laptop screen 
looks the same as this big 4K screen that I have here, I think would be a huge advantage to me. Well, keep, keep, keep in mind also though, between your hundred percent agree, I, I've got two, I've got a, I've got a 27 inch and a 34 inch um, side by side here on my design machine. Um, and I've never calibrated them. So they, I, I assume they, they, they look different there's difference in brightness. There's different yeah. hue. I mean, they're off a little bit. And so I think it will be good to do that. Um, but I also, they also run at different resolutions and they run at different, uh, refresh rates. Mm. And I think that also can impact a little bit. Like I've got one running 144 Hertz refresh rate and one running at, I don't know, 160 Hertz refresh rate. So, and that's pretty high. So you're not going to see the, you know, the, I don't think the human eye is going to see much difference between the two. Um, so I, but I did have a question for you, Robert, do you either on projector or, or in the color settings in the PC? there are usually the ability to change it to warm or cool or the different kind of color. Do you have a, a preference? Do you like leaving it neutral, then calibrate it? Do you change it to warm and calibrate it? What's your thoughts on that? Um, if anything, neutral and calibrated. Um, basically, you're trying to get to um, uh, what's called D65, um, uh, which is kind of like the standardized white point, essentially. Okay. Um, and whenever you're going through and messing with color temperature, um, uh, like you're describing, essentially you're changing that white point. Um, uh, either you're upping it um, yeah, uh, as yeah. you go cooler or lowering it as you go warmer. Um, yeah. So neutral's best. Well, that was kind of, be that. and that was my question is, okay, so I, so I get this calibration. Um, I, I, I would assume it's more or less a camera, right? Um, yeah, kind of. And so I, I do that. It's got its software. Does that software then make the adjustments to my monitor or does it give me a suggestions on how to like, how does it, so it, it tells me, Hey, this is off. Oh, it's, you're completely yeah. messed up, but how do I get them calibrated now? Does the software do that for me or am I still adjusting things manually? Um, so what it's going to do is it's going to create what's called an ICC profile, um, which is another, it's another standardized thing. Okay. Um, and then it'll go and apply that, um, uh, to your, well, here, I'll go like your video this. card. I'm, I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking in the NVIDIA yeah. control panel to see if I can import an ICC setting. In, I'm assuming inside like here, your, your, your I'll, video I'll, card control panel, it's going to do something. I will, I'll walk you through Yeah. Real great. quick. Yeah. Um, share my screen. Doopity do. Screens. Master, you might have to show. Yeah, I will. When you start sharing, I'll, it'll come up. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm still on Windows 10, but like I'm uh, just went under display settings. Yep, yep. Advanced display settings. Display adapter, and then you'll see color management. Uh huh. And under here, what it'll do is it'll create a new profile. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh. We're learning. So these, we're learning stuff, man. Oh, that's and smart stuff there. But, and so these are like the default ones that are okay. built into, you know, like Windows and stuff. And like I said earlier, um, uh, yeah, pretty much everything on the internet is sRGB, sRGB based. So that's going to be your, you know, most popular one. And so then you would come in here and add, um, uh, your your ICC profile. And then, so that software creates that profile for you. You just browse to it, open it up inside there and apply it. Exactly. Fantastic. Yep. Exactly. We're, we're totally going to do this. That's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Depending on the software, it's been a long time <laughs> since I've done it. Um, uh, at least our, our old software um uh whenever we were using it sorry i keep closing my stream no, it's, it's just a compulsive thing i guess for me um but at least ours back in the day it would automatically apply it i haven't used pretty much any other companies um uh color profiling software so i'm not positive if it just automatically now, applies it ben or not Q but either way it'll calibration save it. like units or no no Okay. Um, uh, that's, that's, that's all third party, but we work really closely with them. Okay. Um, especially over on the, 
photography side of things on our photography monitors and them uh you know designer monitors stuff like that um that's we work with like calman and calibrite that's one of the major manufacturers um pantone the other companies um just very invested in color overall yeah um uh really more uh more than anything um and just really i think trying to kind of we do our best to kind of interconnect the two um that color specialty on both the monitor and projector side nice cool Matthew, yeah, any I'm, more I'm questions looking, for him? no i'm, I'm I, did, I never looked at the color management tab i'm just actually i was just clicking through right now to make sure i knew how to get there and yeah i never messed with that um, i think i've noticed it there before i just really never understood until now how to use yeah. it yeah you know never yeah. never really clicked on it before either um uh to be honest yeah i've i've, I've really just i'm not a photographer um uh i've coached other people through doing it but i'm you know i'm I'm not a photographer videographer i don't do things that are color sensitive like designing golf courses yeah. and you know like a, in, in in a game engine or anything like that so it's never been super important to me um but for a lot of professionals out there they're definitely going to be very familiar with it that's for sure well i yeah. i think this was great I uh, I learned a ton and have some work to go do. We got to get our hands on one of those calibrating uh, devices, though. But um, man, Robert, this is great. Thank you so much for for going through this. I don't I don't have any more questions, Master. Do you got anything else? No, I, I think um, I've got lots of uh, I think questions in my head that I want to go out and play with stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, 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 yeah. That, but um, no. So I expect in our much. next episode, your screen's going to be all like fluorescent orange because you screwed with the color palette and <laughs> jacked and everything. Nothing works right. It could be. Very well could be, for sure. Yeah. I do notice that you have some very warm lighting in that room, I've got to admit. I think it's actually the, the light that's right here is a really um, warm. I'm looking at this light. It's like, I feel like it's brown. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Nice. And, and on top of that, I've got uh, the, 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 paint on my walls is brown too. It's got the grandfather clock yeah there's yeah. a lot of brown going on here <laughs> for sure yeah absolutely yeah i'd like mashy well, who's just oversaturated in the background right i just do i'm i, I actually <laughs> changed out these uh bulbs in this room to something that was a little bit brighter but also a little bit more natural because it was yeah. like white white um but no i tend to my my office is a disaster right now so i tend to put my background up so i can hide all my trash behind it behind my desk <laughs> yeah that's um uh that's that's kind of why i've got this camera angle going on is so you know up yeah, up and away down instead of yeah. down yeah yeah exactly I'm well you guys can see my dog's trying bed. to avoid that my, my dog's yep. bed down there that she likes to sleep in here when during the day when i'm working well, Robert, I hope we didn't get you in trouble. Uh, um, well, that remains to be seen based on the edits. <laughs> yeah. uh, at least from what I can tell. <laughs> Steve is going to have to do some magic. Steve is going to do <laughs> some magic. So good thing what? we pay him a lot. Like, like I said, um, uh, you can send me just the raw video. I've got a guy. He sits <laughs> right in front of me at work. It's so he's, weird. He's, he's super he's good at what department. he does. He's super is, good at what he does. Is his he name can Steve? definitely, he can, he can, he can definitely make all those bad things disappear. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much, um, everybody. I hope you learned a little of something on the show this week, and uh, yep. we'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody. See you guys have Bye. a good holiday.